In this video we're going to learn some terminology about ellipses and we're going to find out how to find the um, equation of the ellipse in Cartesian and parametric form in the more common situations which you will face in an NCA level 3 conics internal. So let's have a look at our ellipse. Um, here we've got an ellipse, it's got two foci and an ellipse can be described as the locus of points which um, are formed when the total distance from one foci um, to the locus back to the other foci is a constant length. I like to think of it as an equation of ellipse is just the unit circle which is x squared plus y squared equals 1 stretched horizontally and vertically and that's why we've got divided by the a squared and b squared. So um, this is the equation centred at the origin, this is the equation centred at the point um, M and N. Now it's important to note that the centre of the ellipse is midway between the foci and this is the um, same ellipses where we are doing it parametrically. So typically we call the distance from the centre to the foci a distance C and um, the, we have the major axes which is the distance from this here through both foci to the other side, it's like the longest diameter, and the minor axes would be the length um, from here to here, which is the shortest diameter of the ellipse. Okay, so let's find an equation where we're given the foci and the major axes. So the major axis here is 20, and um, these are the foci. The centre is halfway between these, so obviously it's still going to be on the line 6, but halfway between 2 and 8 is 5. So 5 and 6, that gives us our M and N value. Now um, we've got that C is 3, um, because that's going to be the distance from the centre to the foci. And we also have that A equals 10. A is half the major axes, and later on we see that B is half the minor axes. Now we have this formula for linking um, A squared and B squared and C squared. Be careful, because it is different to the one we're going to get for hyperbola in a later video today. Um, now, substituting the values here, rearranging, so B squared is A squared minus C squared, so that's 100 minus 9, so B squared is 91. So we're just going to substitute in um, 91 for the B squared, we're going to substitute in 100 for a squared and the 5 and the 6 to give us this formula and being careful on this one here difference it's going to be the square root of a squared or it's going to be a and b so we have to have those ones like that. So let's look at our next example this is very similar to the last one the only difference is that we're going to be dealing with the minor axes rather than the major axes. So the midpoint worked out in the same way, halfway between these, the centre is th um, 3, 3. The distance from here to here is 2, so C is 2. This time it's the minor axes, um, so we've got B equals half of this value, which is 6. Same formula, um, just arranged correctly for us this time. So A squared equals um, B squared, which is 36 plus C squared is 4. So A squared is 40. So we're going to substitute 3 for both M and N. A squared is going to be 40. B squared is going to be 36. And then obviously we've got to make sure we use A and B on these ones to get our final um, parametric form of the equation. Okay, so here's our last example where we're finding the equation when we know the distance from one foci to the ellipse and back to the other foci. This is the slightly harder than the others, but it's also the most important one and the most common one. So here we've got the two foci and halfway between these foci is the um, origin. So hence there's no take away m or take away um, n going on here. And we've got that total distance is 10. Now, that total distance from one foci out to the ellipse and back happens to be the same as the um, major axes. And you can check that for yourself and verify it. It's not too difficult to do. So we've got the centre at 0, 0. The distance from 0, 0 to the foci is 3. So we've got C is 3. So 
A is half that total distance, just like we've said. So that means A equals 5. And now we've got A and B. We're going to use that same form that we used before. And we end up with B equals 4, a nice Pythagorean triple there. We're going to shove um, those values of A, into A and B into this formula. And we're going to shove that value of A and B into this pair of equations here to get our equation in parametric form. In the description below you can find a link to a worksheet that has questions that you can try on your own. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay in infield with Winfield.